Welcome to the ultimate guide to candlestick patterns episode 3. In the previous episode, we examined some effective reversal candlestick patterns and in this episode, we're going to discuss more reversal candlestick patterns that can be helpful and reliable in identifying changes in the direction of the price. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Before I start the patterns, I must mention an important point about reversal patterns. I mentioned it in the previous episode and it's necessary to mention it here again. The term reversal is somehow a misnomer because when we say reversal, the first thing that comes to mind is that for example the uptrend stop and it's gonna reverse to a downtrend instantly. But this is not always the case and most of the time reversing of the direction of the trend happens slowly after going through different stages. For example, after spotting a reversal pattern following an uptrend, it only means that there is a possibility that this uptrend is weakening and we may see changes in this uptrend, not necessarily turning off this uptrend to a downtrend. For example, the price may go to a trading range before reversing to a downtrend or it may continue that uptrend again after the range. So when we say reversal, it means that the direction of the price is likely to change, not necessarily a quick reversal. So we need other clues and more confirmations before entering a trade based on the signals generated by candlestick patterns. Alright, the first pattern that I want to explain is called Harami. Harami is a Japanese word meaning pregnant. In this pattern we have two candles. The first is long and is considered to be the mother and the second candle is small and included in the body of the first candle and is considered to be the baby. We have two kinds of Harami pattern, bullish and bearish. Bullish Harami forms in the bottom following a downtrend or near a support level. Being in the decline, as we expect, we have a long red candle, which is actually our pattern's first candle. This long red candle shows selling pressure and it indicates that the bears are in control. The second candle opens with a gap above the first candle close. Actually, it opens in the body of the first candle and the result is a small candle. It's a spinning top with small shadows. The size of the shadows are not usually important, but it's better to be small. Whatever the size of the shadows, they must be inside the body of the first candle. In another words, the whole second candle from low to high must be inside the body of the first candle. The color of the second candle doesn't matter because it's small and we don't have much activity between open and close. And the smaller the body of the second candle, the stronger is the pattern. This candle shows a sudden change in the market sentiment because after a long red candle, the next candle opens with a gap in the opposite direction of the trend, which shows a sudden increased buying interest. And the result is a small candle which shows standoff among buyers and sellers. It's a deadlock between bulls and bears and it shows that the trend is weakening and there is a possibility that a reversal may happen. And we have the same for bearish Harami but in the opposite direction. This pattern forms in the top following an uptrend or near a resistance level and being in an advance as we expect the first candle is long and green and it shows buying pressure. The next candle opens with a gap inside the body of the first candle which shows that we have a sudden increase of interest for selling and by closing of this candle near its open it shows the trend is vulnerable and the buying pressure is decreased. Uh, this candle shows indecision among buyers and sellers and indicates that the advance is weakening and we may have a reversal. Another form of Harami pattern which is considered the strongest version of that pattern is called Harami cross. Instead of that small candle, here we have a doji. If you remember, in Harami pattern I said the smaller the second candle, the stronger the pattern. And here with this doji, it's the most significant form of this pattern. The interpretation of bullish Harami cross and bearish Harami cross is exactly similar to bullish Harami and bearish Harami. So I don't repeat it here again. The only difference is that in Harami cross, the degree of significance is higher and it's a stronger pattern in compared to Harami pattern. Belt hold. In this pattern, we have one candlestick that is an opening marubozu and it can be both of a bullish or bearish pattern. If you remember from the first episode, in bullish opening marubozu, we have a long green candle that doesn't have lower shadow. And in bearish opening marubozu, we have a long red candle that doesn't have upper shadow. If you're not familiar with different types of candles and how they are interpreted, I recommend you to watch the episode one later after this episode. 
All right, getting back to the belt hold pattern, we have two kinds of this pattern, bullish belt hold and bearish belt hold. Bullish belt hold forms in the bottom following a decline or near support levels. Being in the decline, the price opens with a considerable gap below the last candle close and at first, this may seem very high selling pressure, but instantly higher than the selling pressure, we get very high buying pressure, which doesn't even allow the bears to go lower than the open and the bulls very aggressively push the price up, fill the gap and ideally goes inside in the body of the previous candle. The longer the height of the belt hold candlestick, the stronger and more significant becomes the pattern. This pattern shows the downtrend is weakening and we have increased buying pressure. If the next candle is red, it means that the selling pressure is back and the continuation of the downtrend is more probable and if it's green, it more indicates that the bears lost the control and there is a possibility for reversal. Just pay attention that because this is a one candle pattern, it can happen in combination with other candlesticks to form a dual or triple patterns like a bullish engulfing or piercing pattern for example. And bearish belt hole is the mirror image of the bullish belt hole. Uh, this is a bearish reversal pattern and it forms in the top following an advance or near resistance levels. The price opens with a considerable gap above the last candle close but instantly we encounter a very high selling pressure which the bulls don't even get the chance to drive the price higher than the open and the bears push the price down aggressively and fill the gap and ideally the price goes inside the body of the previous candle. The longer the belt hold candlestick, the stronger and more significant the pattern and this shows that the uptrend is weakening and there is a possibility that we may have a reversal similar to the bullish one here also the candle can be considered with other candles to form patterns such as bearish engulfing or dark cloud cover for example meeting line or some calls it counter attack pattern this pattern is somehow similar to belt hold pattern but uh, there are some differences. In this pattern we have two candles of opposite colors and both of them have long candles but in belt hold we have one candle and it doesn't matter what's the previous candle. Bullish meeting line is a bullish reversal pattern which means it forms in the bottom following a decline or near support levels. As we expect being in a downtrend the first candle is a long red candle that shows selling pressure. The next candle opens sharply in lower prices. In another words, it opens with a considerable gap below the first candle close. At first, it may seem a very high selling pressure and the bears feeling confident, but suddenly the bulls operate their counter attack and they push the price up back to the previous candle close. So for that session, the price remains unchanged from the previous session close and this shows very significant buying pressure somewhere in the bottom, which gives the possibility that a reversal may happen. The longer the green candle, I mean if it goes higher and penetrates inside the body of the previous candle, the stronger becomes the pattern. In this case, it may look like a piercing pattern. Just pay attention that in piercing pattern, uh, the gap is not very considerable like this pattern. And in meeting line, we don't need the price to go and pierce in the body of the previous candle. And filling the gap is enough to make this pattern valid because that's a considerable gap. So generally, the longer the green candle, the stronger and more significant becomes the pattern. And in bearish meeting line, whatever we just said is applied here, but in the opposite direction. It forms in the top following an advance or near resistance levels and it gives the possibility that the direction of the price may change. The first candle as we expect is a long green candle and the next candle is a long red candle that opens with a considerable gap above the first candle close and closes at the same level of the previous candle close which means that in this session uh, the price remains unchanged from the previous session close because of the counter attack operated by the bears and this shows that we have a very high selling pressure somewhere in the top which gives a possibility of reversal for this pattern to be valid filling the gap and closing at the level that the previous candle closed is enough but if the price goes lower and penetrates in the body of the previous candle similar to dark cloud cover the pattern becomes stronger generally the longer the red candle the stronger and more significant is the pattern another pattern that is similar to meeting line is called kicker in this pattern also we have two long candles of opposite colors but here the second candle opens with a considerable gap in the opposite direction of the trend actually it opens in the opening level of the first candle 
we have two kinds of kicker pattern, bullish and bearish. Bullish kicker forms in the bottom at the end of declines or near support levels. The first candle, as we expect, is a long red candle that shows selling pressure, but suddenly bulls kick the bears and next candle opens at the opening price of the first candle. Actually, the price movement or selling pressure of the first candle is wiped out by opening of the next candle in the opening level of the previous candle. And until now, this shows that because of reasons, we have high buying pressure. And for this candle, also the bulls remain in command and push the price up significantly. And the result is a long green candle. This pattern shows a very high buying pressure and it gives us the signal that this downtrend is weakening and we may have a reversal. And bearish kicker forms in the top following an advance or near resistance levels. Uh, the first candle is long and green which shows buying pressure and the next candle opens in the opening level of the first candle. And this gap shows a sudden selling pressure and actually the price movement of the previous session is wiped out by opening of this candle and the bears remain in control in the session and aggressively push the price down and the result is a long red candle. This pattern shows a very high selling pressure and gives the possibility that this uptrend may end and a reversal is possible to happen. Alright, the next pattern is called tweezer, tweezer top and tweezer bottom. They are called tweezer because they are similar and act like the two prongs of a tweezer. Tweezer top forms following an uptrend or near resistance levels and it consists of two candles. The first one is a medium to long green candle as we expect for paying in an advance. And the second candle is a shorter red candle that is in the low to high range of the first candle. And the high of this candle is equal to the high of the first candle. Pay attention that in this pattern, the focus is on the highs and the second candle can open above or below the first candle open, not necessarily in the same level. The highs can be composed of bodies or shadows. The point is that we must have matching highs. So the highs can be either body, for example, in the case of Maru Bozu, or uh, top of the upper shadow in a candle. And this matching highs show a resistance level is establishing and uh, gives the possibility that a reversal may happen. And tweezer bottom forms following a decline or near support levels. The first candle is medium to long red candle as we expect and the second candle is a shorter green candle that is in the low to high range of the first candle and its low is equal to the low of the first candle. Pay attention that in this pattern the focus is on the lows. So the second candle can open above or below the first candle open. Uh, the lows of the two candles must be equal. This matching lows show that a support level is establishing and this downtrend is weakening and there is a possibility for reversal. Pay attention that tweezer pattern becomes stronger and more significant when they are also part of other patterns. For example, a Harami cross with the same highs or lows or for example after a long green candle the next candle is hanging man or shooting star with matching highs or after a long red candle we have hammer with matching lows in these cases the probability of reversal is higher in other patterns that are similar to tweezer top and tweezer bottom are matching high and matching low patterns. Matching low forms in the bottom following a decline or near support levels. The pattern is made of two candles. The first candle is a medium to long red candle as we expect for being in a downtrend. And the second candle is also a red candle shorter than the first candle that is opened in the body of the first candle. In, in other words, the second candle opens with a gap above the first candle close, which at first shows a sudden high buying pressure, but sellers step in and take the control of the price and again push the price down and the candle closes at the price level that the first candle was closed. If the second candle has a lower shadow, the shadow should not go lower than the first candle lower shadow. This pattern shows that the bears are not strong enough to go lower and a support level is establishing and this gives the possibility that this downtrend is weakening and we may have a reversal. And matching high is mirror image of the matching low. Matching high forms in the top following an uptrend or near resistance levels. The first candle is medium to long green candle as we expect and the second candle is also a green candle shorter than the first candle and it's open in the body of the first candle. In, in other words, it's open with a gap below the first candle close which shows sudden high selling pressure but the bulls again take the control and push the price up 
and the candle closes at the level that the first candle was closed. And this shows that buyers are not strong enough to go higher and a resistance level is establishing. Pay attention that if the second candle has upper shadow, it shouldn't go higher than the first candle upper shadow. Another pattern that shows establishing support or resistance levels is stick sandwich pattern. Bullish stick sandwich forms in the bottom following a decline or near support levels. The first candle as we expect is a medium to long red candle and the second candle opens with a gap above the first candle close and this candle uh, closes above the first candle open and this shows a sudden shift from selling pressure to high buying pressure. And the third candle also opens with a gap above the second candle open but the bears step in and take the control again and push the price down significantly and the candle closes approximately at the, uh, at the level that the first candle was closed and its lower shadow shouldn't go lower than the first candle shadow. This shows that a support level is establishing and the bears are not able to break this level and they are losing a strength and this gives the possibility that this downtrend is weakening and we may see a reversal and bearish stick sandwich forms following an advance or near resistance levels. The first candle is a medium to long green candle that shows buying pressure but the second candle opens with a gap below the first candle close and it closes below the first candle open that shows we have a change from buying pressure to a sudden selling pressure. The third candle opens with a gap below the second candle close but buyers again take the control and push the price up and the candle closes at the level that the first candle was closed and its upper shadow also should not go higher than the first candle upper shadow. This formation shows that a resistance level is establishing and the bulls are not able to break this level which indicates that the uptrend is weakening and the direction of the price may change. Alright the next patterns I want to explain are 3 white soldiers and 3 black crows. 3 white soldiers is bullish reversal pattern and it forms in the bottom following a downtrend or near support levels. In this pattern we have 3 candles and 3 of them are long green candles. Following the downtrend, a long green candle forms on the chart which is the first candle in this pattern and after that the second candle opens with a gap below the first candle close and at first it may seem that the bears are back and the price may continue declining but the bulls again take the control and push the price up significantly higher than the first candle close and the third candle again opens with a gap below the second candle close but this time also the bears don't have the ability to take the control of the price and the bulls push the price up higher than the second candle close. This pattern shows that the downtrend is seriously vulnerable and buying pressure is stronger than selling pressure and this gives the possibility that a reversal may happen. And three black crows is exactly similar but in the opposite direction. Here the pattern forms in the top following an advance or near resistance levels and the first candle is long and red which shows selling pressure somewhere in the top. The next candle opens with a gap above the first candle close but no chance for the bulls and the bears push the price lower significantly and the candle closes below the first candle close. The third candle again opens with a gap above the second candle close but this time also the bulls are not able to take the control and the bears push the price down and the candle closes below the second candle close. This pattern shows selling pressure is much higher than the buying pressure and this indicates that this uptrend may end and a reversal is possibly happening. Two crows. Two crows is a bearish reversal pattern which means it forms in the top following an advance or near resistance levels. The first candle is a medium to long green candle and the second candle opens with a considerable gap above the first candle close but sellers don't allow the buyers to go higher, take the control of the price and push the price down and the candle closes above the first candle close. In, in other words we see a gap between the two candles. And the third candle is a long red candle. It opens with a gap in the body of the previous candle but again the bulls are not able to take the control of the price and the bears aggressively push the price down, fill the gap and the candle closes in the body of the first candle. This pattern shows a very high selling pressure and gives the possibility that the uptrend may end and a reversal is possibly happening. Another pattern that is somehow similar to two crows pattern is upside gap two crows. This pattern is also a bearish reversal pattern and it forms in the top. 
The first candle is similarly a medium to long green candle and the second candle like the two crows pattern opens with considerable gap above the first candle close and it also closes above the first candle close and we see a gap between the two bodies but here the third candle opens with a gap above the second candle open and closes below the second candle close in another words the third candle is a long red candle that engulfs the body of the second candle and this indicates that we have a very high selling pressure and there is a possibility for reversal in compared to two crows this pattern is a little weaker because the gap is not filled yet and the gap um, may play as a support level but still this pattern shows a very high selling pressure and there is a possibility that the uptrend may end and we see a change in the direction of the price three inside up and three inside down three inside up is a bullish reversal pattern which means it forms in the bottom following a decline or near support levels the first candle as we expect is a medium to long red candle and it shows selling pressure and after that we have a short green candle that opens and closes in the body of the first candle and it's totally included in the body of the first candle the third candle opens with a gap below the first candle close that at first you may think that the bears are back and the price is going to decline again but the bulls take the control of the price and become the winner of the session the result is a green candle that closes above the first candle open or ideally above the first candle high and this shows a very high buying pressure and gives the possibility that we may see a change in the direction of the trend pay attention if the second candle is small this pattern becomes an extension of bullish harami and by having the third candle we will have a very significant possibility of reversal and three inside down is exactly like three inside up but in the opposite direction here the pattern forms in the top and it's bearish reversal pattern the first candle is a medium to long green candle the second candle opens and closes in the body of the first candle and is totally included in the body of the first candle and the third candle opens with a gap above the second candle close and it closes ideally below the first candle low this pattern shows a very high selling pressure and it indicates that the trend may end and a reversal is possibly happening and pay attention also here in the case that the second candle is small this pattern becomes an extension of bearish harami pattern and with this third candle the possibility of reversal becomes very strong and significant three outside up and three outside down three outside up is a bullish reversal pattern that forms in the bottom following a decline or near support levels the first candle is a short to medium red candle but whatever the size of the first candle the second candle is a longer green candle that totally engulfs the first candle until now it's exactly like bullish engulfing pattern and it shows buying pressure and possibility of reversal if you're not familiar with engulfing patterns i explained them in episode 2 and you can watch it later after this episode and the third candle opens with a gap below the second candle close but the bulls don't allow the bears to take the control and aggressively push the price up and the candle closes above the previous candle and this shows a very high buying pressure actually this pattern is an extension of uh, bullish engulfing and by having the third candle it shows higher buying pressure and makes this pattern stronger and more significant than bullish engulfing and three outside down is mirror image of three outside up this pattern forms in the top and it's a bearish reversal pattern the first candle is a short to medium green candle and the second candle is a longer red candle that totally engulfs the first candle and the third candle opens in the body of the second candle and closes below the second candle which shows we have considerable increased selling pressure and the bulls are losing a strength which gives the possibility that this uptrend may end and a reversal is possibly happening uh, this pattern is an extension of bearish engulfing pattern and by having the third candle it shows higher selling pressure and makes this pattern stronger and more significant than bearish engulfing pattern all right that's it in this episode we examine more reversal candlestick patterns and i explain how you can correctly identify and interpret them and how they help you to analyze the behavior and actions of buyers and sellers to forecast the possible changes in the direction of the market in next episode i'll discuss continuation candlestick patterns and you will learn some excellent patterns that can be very helpful in your trading decisions 
Thank you for watching this video and I hope it has been helpful for you. If you found any value in this video, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the bell so you get the notifications of my new videos. See you guys in next episode and good luck with your trading.